What's up, YouTube? Back at a property that had carnage. Some of you may remember a video we did where there were three trees that leveled a mobile home and nearly killed a guy. Just amazing that he had just got up and went to the other room and then they crashed. One, two, three, and he made it out. Destroyed, total loss of the house. And now we're back for these other freaks, these other pines that are around the new house. You'd think they would take it out before the house, but no. So we're back and we got a little bit of things to do here and we'll show you some of it. So he's gonna start on this big freaky pig and we will, me and Joe and Max and Hosanna will be working over here you guys Damn. probably wondering where I'm gonna fell this thing, huh? <laughs> you know what's funny is that was my first thought when I went to my first tree job with some climber, some real arborist types. Uh huh. Real arborist types that wore baseball hats and and spurred <laughs> everything. But anyway. But that's beside the point. They had this tree, and uh, it was impossibly hanging over this foundation. Uh huh. And I was like, where are they gonna fall it? That's me at 18 or whatever. Wondering. Yeah, like it has to be fell somewhere. Yeah, I thought you gotta fall it because I came from the Alaska logger thing. You probably would have figured something out. No, I would have. No, I was not the man for it. But anyway, I'm giving you this camera. What's up, YouTube? We're a few minutes into this tree here. Limming up a bunch of stuff. I got a little tie-in in this big weird buckwheat looking branch. Basically what I'm doing right now is just traversing my line from branch to branch to branch and around the trunk <clears throat> as I work. Cutting everything off at approximately waist and chest level here. So my next step here we'll be you know cutting this off i'll get that little arm off i'll get this little arm off simplify that stuff see what i can do about this see if that'll come out clean because that's big enough that if it's stabbed to the corner of the blacktop there maybe it could uh knock a corner off or something so um i think i can get it though with a couple of little cuts and i'll dump it down there into the grass We've got Joe up there, uh, high up in this little skinny pine. I think they're gonna crane out most of that tree, if not the whole thing. So he'll set the slings with a couple half hitches up high, and he's got them terminated there and there. Then he'll uh, repel down and make a cut somewhere down there. And then he'll do the same thing on this next tall skinny one. Right now I'm basically just staying busy in this so that we're making progress somewhere else and we're just having Max and Hosanna be careful on the ground of little bouncing things. So now, in order to get around this branch here, this is what I'm doing is choking off around the whole tree, cinching myself up, you know. This thing I'm sure I could trust, but it's crusty dead. I mean, oh, I wish I would have known that they were that far along. They came down, they made their cut. So now I'll just have to be watching out for these guys when they're setting stuff, when they're setting these down and making sure I'm not gumming them up or causing any potential hazards. Choked off here, I'm gonna undo my flip line, double checking everything beforehand, of course. That way I can get this around the tree. I got some little sticks and stuff on the other side there too. They're giving me troubles. Yeah. There it is. One of those situations where you can't give it the full beans all the way around the whole tree because 
you have to like keep it tight so that it clears branches like that and then let it fly and then it'll get distance around. Anyways, you know how to do it. Honestly. branch there you guys you can kind of see where my concern was because that thing stabbed right like a foot from that black top there it didn't do anything it shot dirt up to the edge as far as i know as far as it looks but i, I knew it was going to be super close all right so we got action on the forefront here Boy, those pines are so bendy. That's not, uh, you know, yeah, it's just catching friction here in my tree, breaking branches out, but everybody is in a safe spot. Out from underneath the tree, I'm in a safe spot. He's checking his capacities and everything to make sure that he's staying well within where he needs to be. I'm just gonna hang out here for a sec while he sets this bowing. You can, you can imagine the forces that are being applied there, like if that was forces applied by snow on one of these long noodly things, then man, they, they sure can handle a lot until they get separated unions like this, you know? So if you're prying on a union, it's gonna be cranking on this stuff down here. It's one thing to bend, you know, one spar as its own but when they're separate like that you know you can split them off but they're both uh half hitched up high and terminated down lower so if we were to lose it and it broke somewhere between the half hitch and the termination we would still have it at the termination um and there would be a little bit of a dynamic load on the frame which wouldn't be fun wouldn't be cool but i'm assuming that's why he's keeping the boom high and getting a little bit of a cable angle here <laughs> thing goes way out there anyways i gotta preserve battery so i'm gonna shut you guys down for a second and uh you'll see that stuff from august's view like he's probably about down to where he's gonna make the cut. Now Hosanna's probably confused because I said, Hosanna, 
the branch is still on my rope. And then August said, Hosanna, clear out. Which is absolutely the thing to do at this very moment. But as we all know, it's better to be safe and get out of there. And uh, my rope can wait. It's kind of a little dance between me being busy while they're setting picks and getting ready. And then, uh, and then I wait while they are setting picks down. Which is nice, you know? Because you'll be running around in this thing, getting poked and stabbed and sweaty. So it gives you a little break. You don't have to go from point A to point B all in one swoop. And um, still big things are being done. So I like it. I'm having a fun, good fun day. Either negative rigging or speed lining. Some tops out of this. I don't know if speed lining is gonna be what we do today on this tree, but we might have to shorten that tree up for the boom. And it's possible that we could speed line a top out of that one out into there. Maybe I should say this, maybe I shouldn't say this, but they're testing uh, maybe some sort of a prototype at the very moment for a uh, Monkey Beaver Speedline kit anchor. Kind of like you've seen the backbone used and the tree angle used. But um, this one's got some cool, unique features um, for that job. So maybe you'll see that on today's video, maybe you won't. Maybe it's not that far yet. Yeah, you made me this way, August. Touch base with you guys real quick. What I'm doing is I've got a set, of, a set of rings here and a set of rings here. I'll make a face cut right here and tip that top out. And then I'll make a face cut right here 
and tip that top out. Let me see if I can just lower it and get it to fall out. Like you were talking about, it can't really hurt any. I could do a little, I could do some chunking onto the back side there until it starts getting big. And by that time, we'll probably be about there. Yeah, that'll be easy chunking down to Joe's level, you know? Yeah, that's what I mean. I'll just, I'll just walk it down to where I have, because this stuff here to chunk would be still pretty easy chunking with the 201. I can just get a crane ready. All right, here we are. We're at the top. We're gonna just chunk wood down to be self-sufficient again and make progress again. And that was as flat as it gets. Big hug here, huh? <laughs> <laughs>